Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is talk to you about how we go about using this function here, the inverse normal function on the Casio class with calculator. Although you'll most probably find that you've got a function similar to this on other scientific calculators. So do check out your manual. Well, the inverse normal function gives an observed value x for a random variable x following a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, where sigma is the standard deviation. And the probability of being less than the observed value x is given, as you can see here in this sketch of the normal distribution. So in order to demonstrate how this works, I've got a question here with three parts to it, which will hopefully expand on this as well. We'll be talking about finding an observed value when you're given the lower quartile, a percentile, and also trying to find the observed value over an interval, something like this. So before we start, just want to check out how we get to this function because it might not be displayed immediately on your calculator. You may well be in some other mode. So if you are in, say, some other mode, make sure you just press the menu button here and then select option 7 here. This will take you to probability distributions and then you should see the inverse normal function here. There's other options available in this menu. If we scroll down, you'll see the binomial and Poisson distributions are mentioned here. If I scroll back up though, there we go, number three, the inverse normal one. So if I enter three, we're into this menu here. Okay, so let's run through this example here. We've got the masses, m grams, of a certain suite a model does a normal distribution. M is distributed normally with a mean of 50 and a variance of 0.2 squared. In other words, 0.04. But I've kept it as the standard deviation 0.2 and then just written the squared there. So find the mass M of a suite where we have the probability that the mass m being less than this observed value, little m, is equal to 0.25. Well, I'd always suggest drawing a sketch for something like this. So if we had our graph with a mean here of 50 grams, then we're looking for the area to the left of the observed value, little m, to be equal to 0.25. So we can see that that would be, say, a value over here. I'll put that as the observed value, little m, and it's this area in here, which would be 0.25, representing that probability, or 25%. And it's well worth noting here that the question could have asked you to find the lower quartile, because for the lower quartile, the probability of being less than it is 0.25. Remember, 25% of your values would be less than the lower quartile. So there we are. Note that M is the lower quartile. You could get a question phrased like that. If it were the upper quartile, then it would be the probability of being less than the upper quartile would be 75%, 0.75. And I'd have M on this side here with the area to the left of it being 0.75. Anyway, so we've got to calculate M and all we need to do is in this mode, we put the area, which is set at the moment at zero, okay, as 0.25. So we'll put in there 0.25. So we've got 0.25, press equals to enter it. Now we have the standard deviation, which at the moment is set at one, but the standard deviation for this question is 0.2. So put in there 0.2, enter it by pressing equals, and now it's asking for the mean, mu, and the mean is 50. So just put 50 in, press equals to enter that. Now we've got all our values in, just press equals again, and you can see we've got 49.86 and so on. 
In other words, 49.9 to one decimal place. So it follows from here then that our observed value m is equal to 49.9 to one decimal place, one dp there. And you should be able to check from your sketch that it's clearly less than the 50. And by having a sketch, it just confirms that there's a good chance this is right because it's to the left of the 50, 49.9 then for that observed value. Now for the next example, I've got the probability of being more than the observed value, little m here, is 30%. And this should demonstrate some other ideas. I'll first of all draw that sketch again of our normal distribution with a mean of 50. So for the position of m this time, it's going to be to the right of the 50. So in other words, the probability of being more than that observed value m is going to be 30%. So in here then would be our 30%. As a decimal, remember that would be 0.3. Now that would mean that the probability of being less than m, that's to the left of it, would be 70%. So we'll just mark that in as 70% or as decimal, obviously 0.7. And one of the reasons for picking this one is that it's well worth noting that M is the 70th percentile. So you could have a question which says find the 70th percentile. That would be the same value for M as we're going to find. Remember, it's the value where the probability is less than it. Okay for the 70th percentile here. So if we reset our calculator, we'll just press equals here. It takes us back to our original menu here. The area this time though, is now the 70% or as a decimal, 0.7. So if I put that in 0.7, press equals to enter it. Sigma and mu are the same values. Obviously, if you were doing a separate question, you'd have to change these values. And so if we just press equals now, you can see our answer is 50.10 and so on. So to one decimal place, the value of m is going to be equal to 50.1. Okay, to one decimal place. And again, just checking on the drawing, clearly the value of m has got to be to the right of that 50 as it is, okay? Now in this last example, I've decided just to give you an example where we've got to find the observed value over an interval. And so if we sketch this one again, we've got the mean here of 50. We're looking for the area between 49.9. This is not drawn to scale, but we'll just mark this in. Here's our 49.9 there, okay? and our value m, that's got to be 0.6. So it's this area in here, which is 0.6 or 60%. So we know that the area to the left of m, okay, minus the area to the left of 49.9 must come to this value of 0.6. And we can write that down then in probability terms. That's the same as the probability of being less than m, that's the observed value of m, minus the probability of being less than 49.9 equals 0.6. And if we rearrange this equation by adding this probability to both sides, then we're going to have the probability of being less than m is equal to 0.6 plus the probability of being less than 49.9. Now, in order to work out the probability of being less than 49.9, I need to go back to the normal CD function, the normal cumulative distribution function. So I need to come out of this. So if I press equals, for instance, and go back to the menu, okay, we'll go into seven again, and this time use the normal CD function. Remember I showed you how to use this in a previous tutorial. By pressing two, we enter that mode. 
and the lower value for something like this. Remember, we would take at least a value smaller than six standard deviations below the mean of 50. Well, I'm just going to take a value of, say, zero. OK, there. Might as well keep that zero there. And for my upper value, I can take the 49.9. So put 49.9 in. We need to move the cursor down, though. 49.9. And press equals to enter it. Standard deviation is showing 0 0.2, which is what we have. Just check out the mean by pressing the cursor further down. Mean mu is 50, so it's remembered those two values from before. So just press equals here, and that gives us our probability of being less than 49.9, 0 0.3085 and so on. So if I enter that in there, then we have got 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3085 and so on. And if you work that out, you end up with 0 0.9085. So all I need to do now is just switch the calculator back into the inverse normal function. So if I do that, I'll just press equals. We'll go back to the menu, press 7 again, and then inverse normal is option 3. And now I've got my area to the left of the observed value is 0 0.9085. So I can put that in there. We'll delete that out and put 0 0.9085. We've got to enter that. We've got the standard deviation and mean as before, 0 0.2 and 50 respectively. So just by pressing equals, we find that our observed value, little m, is 50.266 and so on. So Coming down here then, I've therefore got that m equals 50.266 and so on. And it follows from this that this equals 50.3 then to one decimal place, one dp. Okay, so I hope that's given you a good range of examples then on how we can work with the inverse normal function on the Casio class whiz. But if you've got another calculator, do check out your manual. You might well have a function very similar to this. Okay?